Hi, my name is Dr. Ashley Curiel, and I'm a clinical psychologist. Currently, I work in private practice, and I provide psychotherapy to those who are teenagers all the way up. To date, my oldest client has been 98. Someday, I hope to provide therapy to someone in their hundreds. It's a smaller group, but we'll see. Um, what I really like most about what I do is that every day I do something meaningful and purposeful, whether it's providing people help with their career and why they're having trouble with that or why they're having difficulties in relationships, even why they don't feel so great about themselves. So at the end of the day, I might have worked with maybe up to nine people, helping them to figure out what is keeping their life from working as well as it could be. And that feels really, really wonderful. The other really great thing about what I do is I work in a private practice setting, which means I'm my own boss. So I set my own schedule. I decide what I wear to work, which these days it's all remote. So it's a lot more casual. And if I want to take a vacation, I can. I really enjoy that amount of flexibility. It really means I get to be a business person as well as a healthcare provider, which I enjoy. Other people don't like that so much. And so they work in a different kind of setting. Oftentimes you'll find psychologists working in hospitals. They even work sometimes in prisons or with police, maybe even the FBI. That was very exciting for a while and I really wanted to do that, but hmm, ah, PE was my worst subject. So I didn't think I'd make a very good agent. I think I'll have to stick with private practice. But as I said, it's really meaningful. So there's nothing lost there. Um, one question we were supposed to answer is how we got to our position. So there's a question I ask myself every day, how did I get here? I have to say it was not a linear path. Um, as a kid, I did a lot of theater and I did theater all the way through college. But when I got to college, I told myself I was gonna get very serious and I was going to be pre-med and go to medical school. And after some painful times in a chem lab, I realized it was not my jam had to rethink things. So I went back to what I knew, theater and entertainment, and I did that for a long time. I even moved to Los Angeles and I started working on a television show, which was wonderful until it got canceled and I didn't have a job anymore. A lot of people who work in TV are very used to that, but it was the first time for me and it really scared me. And so I decided I wanted more security in what I did for work. So I went to graduate school for about seven years I guess that was secure. It was a long path. So yeah, there is a lot of education involved and that used to seem kind of daunting, but you take it one step at a time and it really is quite cool. You learn a lot and you practice being a therapist and doing assessments all the way through graduate school. So there's never really a dull moment. And before I started working in a private practice setting, I worked in a lot of hospitals like at UCLA, at VA hospitals, and I actually did a lot of assessments. I worked in neuropsychology. And so what is that? It's another thing that psychologists can do because the field is very, very flexible. We don't just provide therapy. I used to assess people for anything from ADHD to dementia. I probably did that for the better part of a decade. And it was really interesting because I could give people paper and pencil or computer tests and look at their test scores and compare it with other people their age and see where the deficits were, where the strengths were, and I could determine what their diagnosis was. I really loved it, but after a while I realized at the end of the day, I might've given someone the worst day of their life because I told them they had dementia. It would be helpful for them to know that because there are interventions, even though there isn't a cure, but I really wanted to be more on the doing side of things. And so I thought, clinical practice really fit well for me, going back to that meaning and purpose thing. So now I work with people, even doing things like cognitive rehabilitation and knowing what their strengths and weaknesses are cognitively and designing strategies to help them to get through a day, whether it's for ADHD or it's because they have a dementia and they're losing memory. So that's how I ended up doing therapy. As I said, nonlinear. You never know where you're gonna start. And of interest, my major was Spanish. So for a while I did assessments and therapy in Spanish. But you wouldn't have normally thought that all of those things would add up to being a clinical psychologist in private practice. 
Um, the education piece, I'll come back to that. It is a lot of school. Psychologists go to graduate school and it's typically about seven years after your undergraduate degree, which is about four years. So I wasn't a math major, but that does add up to many, many years. And I found that very intimidating, except I thought, well, I'll either be 30, 35 or 40 and have a degree or I won't. And that kept things into perspective as I kept shrugging along through graduate school and training. There is a lot of training as you go. Every year you'll do a different practicum in a different setting. So while you're in graduate school, you can sample a lot of things. And so that's really a cool thing. Um, the other part about psychologists is that what's different from medical doctors or psychiatrists, they go to medical school. Psychologists go to graduate school. At the end of that, we do a year long internship. And I did my internship at a VA hospital outside of Philadelphia in neuropsychology. So I did a lot of assessments like I mentioned earlier. And then after that, you do a postdoc. So still not done yet, another year at least. Some people do two years. And it can be in anything that you would like. And um, I did more assessments at UCLA, a lot of them diagnosing things like dementias. I even assessed football players because they have head injuries. And that's another thing that we assess. And that's really cool. So there is a lot of experience along the way. There's a lot of education, but it's really worth it. My advice for you is to just do as well as you can in school. If you need help, ask. Stay curious take classes that interest you, as you see with me. Who would have thought that Spanish would end up to time working in television or becoming a psychologist? But it all comes together. And I use that experience in my work with clients because my clients come from a very diverse array of backgrounds. Some are in enter entertainment themselves, some are accountants. You never really know where your client will come from and what they will do. So any experience you have is very helpful and understanding and relating to your clients. So it's all useful. Just stay curious, use your imagination, and truly the only limit to how far you will go or what you will do is your own imagination. I've seen really a change and a shift in things that careers are not linear anymore. It's really about innovation and integrating what you know. So just use your imagination and go as far as you can and enjoy the ride. I really enjoyed all of those career paths that I took as circuitous and winding as it was. It was very, very rewarding and I don't regret any of them. So enjoy whatever you do and really make sure that you do enjoy what you do. I think that's another piece of advice. If you're not loving what it is that you do, it's okay to ask why that is and to make some changes so that you can have the career and the life that you want. Good luck and I hope this little presentation was useful.